All right. So welcome to Monday Night Spark here on a Monday night. We're going to be talking about three most common reasons you suffer from Achilles pain when you run. All right. So it is Monday Night Spark. Dr. Dwayne Scotty, physical therapist with Spark Physical Therapy. We're going to be talking about Achilles pain tonight. And what are the things, what are the three most common reasons you can suffer from Achilles pain? If you're jumping on here on the live, let me know you're on here on the live, as well as let me know if you can hear me. Because if you're just here on the live, you will understand that we had a little technical difficulties and you weren't able to hear me. So hopefully everyone is able to hear me right now. Please let me know because I don't want to talk to myself for the next 20 to 30 minutes. And I apologize for the technical difficulties. All right. I hope everyone had an awesome Father's Day uh, yesterday. Spent some time with your families. I know I spent some good quality time with uh, my girls. And we uh, had an amazing time together. So I went for a nice eight-mile run in the morning. Got to clear my head. Start the day off on the right foot. We uh, did a lot of travel last week. Going to conference. Yay! You can hear me. Thank you, Linda, for letting me know. Um, Thank you. Here we go. Now we're ready. Now we're ready to rock. Um, you guys are coming on here strong. People are coming on for the uh, second version of the uh, Monday Night Spark on this uh, first week of the summer. Kids are out of school, so I figured I'm going to take my Monday Night Spark outside, enjoy the uh, nice weather. So we are live, so we don't know if we're going to have any like dogs barking, someone chasing me, um, the frogs get pretty loud around this area. So I appreciate you guys jumping on. Jason's on. Samantha's on, Sundar, good to see you again. Brian, thanks for uh, jumping on and being interested in this topic. Linda, good old friend, nice to see you. Uh, funny story, I did see a Bally's Fitness uh, ball today that I was working with with one of my clients and I thought of you. Uh, Livy, good to see you, thanks for jumping on. Terry's on, uh, I'm glad Sundar, you're able to hear me. And Kylie, what's up? Good to see you as well. Uh, thanks for jumping on here on the live. So we are going to be talking about Achilles pain because number one, last week, for those of you that watched the NBA finals, then you know that Kevin Durant came back from injury. Um, he had a calf strain that he suffered in an earlier we did a live video on it last week, kind of right after the injury happened. I was not surprised that it did happen. And we had a feeling he was going to have a full tear based upon the injury before we got the report. Um, I kind of had a feeling that it was fully torn. If anyone did see the slow replay of that video, it was a little gruesome there, uh, seeing the muscle kind of jolt up. You can see where the tendon really um, kind of broke right from that point. But the real reason I wanted to talk about this today is because Achilles pain is common in runners. And I come into contact with a lot of runners who have Achilles pain. And what happens if you have Achilles pain that lasts for a really long time, then there's really four stages of having Achilles pain, where you can have this inflammatory phase at, at, at first, which is like a tendonitis. I think most people are familiar with tendonitis, the term. It's an inflammatory process. There's inflammation around the tendon. Um, that's actually not the most common condition that most folks have. Um, type two is degeneration. So there's degeneration of the tendon, which is more of this is been painful for a while. It's been going on for a while. You're feeling some stiffness in the morning. You're having pain. Maybe when during the middle of your run, maybe it loosens up a little bit, but then it's painful at the end of the run or after your run. So this is the degenerative type of condition, this type two condition. And then the other thing that we can have is more of like an acute on chronic. So this is like your type three, where you have an active inflammatory component. So there's high tissue irritability. Maybe your pain's a little bit higher like a five to eight out of a 10 scale. And you probably can't do a single leg calf raise, but it's been going on for months now, your pain. So this is that really irritable phase of this chronic type of condition. And then when we go to that next phase, now we're really leading to kind of partial tearing and then possibly eventually leading to a tear. So we do know that males, especially middle-aged folks in their 30s to 50s are most at risk for tearing their Achilles and developing this condition. So today I wanted to kind of jump on here to give you some helpful tips to prevent you from tearing your Achilles like Kevin Durant, all right? Guys, as you're jumping on here, you guys are coming on here strong. You're here on the live. Um, thank you for coming on here on the live. Sal is on here. Wow, talking about longtime friends. Uh, Sal going way back. Jim, Sal says, Jim, 
Uh, Janice Scotty's on here. Mama Dukes. This is great. Uh, Veronica's on. Cameron's on. And Laura's on. Thank you, Laura, for jumping on here. And so I wanted to come on here. If you're watching this on the replay, guys, just hit team replay. So I know you did see this video and I know that was helpful for you. So let's get into some of tonight's topic here. Three most common reasons you suffer from Achilles pain when you run. Number one, decreased mobility, meaning stiffness in your ankle. You can have stiffness due to one of two reasons. Either your joint is stiff, so the joint just doesn't move, your ankle doesn't flex forward, you're not able to come forward over your ankle, or the soft tissue are stiff and tight. So the soft tissue, meaning the calf muscle, your calf muscle starts in the back of your calf, and then it attaches to your Achilles tendon, largest tendon in the body, most common tendon to rupture throughout the body. Second to number two is the biceps tendon. But uh, we digress. Achilles tendon connects to your heel bone, right? So all that soft tissue from your Achilles tendon, your attachment site to the actual muscle, and then the muscle belly can become tight and restricted. So you, you, you probably feel like you have tight calves all the time. Um, you'll feel like tightness back there. So the thing that you want to address if you have decreased mobility is you can address that soft tissue. So you can do that on your own with some good stretching exercise. I actually posted some good calf stretches, my, my three best calf stretches for runners um, last week. Foam rolling. We've talked a lot about foam rolling these last couple of lives on the benefits of foam rolling and what foam rolling actually does um, and what it doesn't do. But there is some good kind of soft tissue preparation that you can do for your calf muscle before you go out on your runs. And if you do want to kind of find my recipe of how I like to roll the calf muscle, both sides. So there's two heads of the calf muscle, the inside, the outside part, um, depending upon which side is tighter for you that you have trigger points in, you can isolate that one side and then combine some calf motion with active movement. So if you do want a video of how to do that, just type in foam roll um, into the comment box and I will just message you that link of that video um, if you're wondering the best ways to foam roll your calf. Um, but kind of really improving that mobility is going to be key because if you don't have the proper mobility in the actual ankle itself and you don't have normal range of motion, we call that, then that puts extra stress on your tendon, especially, especially if you're doing a lot of hill work. So if you're running a lot of hills, you're doing hill work specifically, or you live in an area where you're running and there's a lot of hills, then, you know, you're going to have issues with um, the tendon having to have more stress and load to it because the ankle flexes more when you're running up a hill. So if that makes sense to you, just say make sense in the comment box, um, just so I know I'm kind of on the, on the right foot here. Kristen, thank you for jumping on. Good to see you. Jenny Joe, Claudia, nice to see you as well. Brittany, uh, thank you for jumping on here on the live. And Sal Ferrari says, hi, G. Um, going back, G, G-Force Cuts. We used to get our hair cut way back when, uh, back in the days uh, with Sal Ferrari there. Um, so decreased mobility, that's the first um, thing that I wanted to mention and the most common reason that or the common findings I see in a lot of my runners that I see who have Achilles pain. So where I go with treatment with that is treating those mobility issues. I gave you a lot of good self strategies that you can do like stretching. There are other things that you may need by a skilled medical professional. So we do things like manipulation to the ankle joint, mobilization to the ankle joint. So joint mobility techniques, mobilization with movement that you might necessarily not be able to do on your own. However, there are some good self-mobilization techniques that you can do with a strap and a band um, that can also be helpful. So you don't always need to rely on someone else to kind of fix your problem. And that's kind of my whole um, idea about doing a lot of these live trainings is to kind of provide you the tools so you can start to take care of some of the things that you need to take care of. And if you are going to a medical provider right now for any pain, honestly, throughout your body, but today we're talking Achilles is, yes, you're going to do the things that your provider is going to help you with, right? So like today I was doing some dry needling. I was doing some instrument assisted soft tissue massage. You can't do that to yourself, right? You can't do that on your own, but the self-mobility techniques, the stretching, the foam rolling, all of that is what my clients are doing on their own. And that is a huge component to getting them better. So that's kind of my goal of these is to kind of educate you and make sure that you are doing the things that you can be doing to help 
cure your condition. All right, so number two. Now, this is honestly the most important. I save this for the middle. It's like the sandwich, right? You got the bread, the middle, you got the meat, right? Hamburger season. So here it is, the meat. The biggest thing that I see is decreased strength or endurance of the calf muscle. So let me say that again. The biggest common reason you suffer from Achilles pain is actually decreased or lack of strength and endurance in the calf muscle. So runners specifically should be able to do 25 single leg calf raises. So that's 25 times standing on one leg, rising your heel all the way up to the top of your toe, and then coming down slowly while keeping your knees straight. Do that. Test yourself right now. Stand on one leg. Um, go ahead and count how many calf raises you can do on your own. You should be able to do 25 of those. If you cannot, that means the endurance of your calf muscle is not up to par to be able to tolerate and log a lot of miles. If it's not up to par, not up to snuff, then what's going to happen is there's going to be compensations that go on. There's going to be extra stress to the soft tissue, specifically your Achilles tendon. So you want to make sure that you have enough endurance and strength in your calf muscle. In treating this condition, the single most important factor to getting better is actually strengthening exercises. So most people think I need to stretch, 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 stretch. And even if you're in that highly irritable stage, so we talked before about that, like stage one or the stage three. So stage one was inflammatory, stage two is like degenerative. Three is that acute on chronic condition. So it's inflammation. So maybe your tissues are highly irritable. You can't do a calf raise, but it's been going on for like three or four months and it's been getting progressively worse. So if you're in that phase, then this might be painful for you. Um, and it might be painful to actually stretch. So it would be contraindicated to actually stretch into pain. So you should be doing pain-free stretching and gentle, gentle stretching in any of those stages. In terms of strengthening, there are ways that we treat the tendon to load the tendon to add some progressive load and strength, which is the single most important factor to getting this condition better. So I just want to repeat that again to the folks in the back is the single most important factor to getting your Achilles pain better is to add load and stress in a progressive fashion over time. So depending upon what stage you are, this is where the medical professional can come in handy, is kind of knowing what stage you are and knowing which specific exercise to prescribe because it is different depending upon which stage you are. There is a ton of research out there to support different strengthening protocols and loading the tendon. So there's really like three different types of exercises that you can load your Achilles tendon with. Um, just kind of real quickly, basically, you can do isometrics, meaning your ankle doesn't move at all. You hold a calf raise position, or you can hold on your edge of your toes off the edge of a step and hold that for 60 seconds. So isometric 60 second holds, you can do it with both legs if one leg is too painful and doing that for like five times. That would be isometric. You're actually adding load stress to the tendon. The next thing that you can do is what we call eccentric loading, which is where you go up with two legs and then you come down just on the one leg slowly. So like a five second lower. So that's our eccentric loading strengthening. That's actually tolerable that most people so it might hurt to do a calf raise up with one, but they can actually tolerate eccentric loading and that helps stimulate and loads to the tendon, helps facilitate that healing so you can get better. There are other protocols where you can do a calf raise as well, so doing pain-free, or you can do heavy slow resistance protocols where you're going a heavier load but a slower pace over time. So like one, two, three, up for one, two, three, and then down for one, two, three. So there are all these different kind of strengthening protocols out there and ways that we can load that tendon for treatment. But let's talk prevention because that's what we're really talking about tonight is preventing yourself from having Achilles pain and it is building up the strength in your calf muscle. So if you have been going to the gym and have been neglecting the lower leg because it's so much better and much more fun to work your hip muscles, right, Sal? You want to do those squats, you want to do those deadlifts right? Those are much more fun. You want to do some walking lunges across the gym, pushing out a medicine ball, 
right? Doing some rotational exercises. Those are a lot more fun to do, right? Than your silly calf raises. However, if your calf muscle is, is kind of weak and it has less endurance, then that is going to be a risk factor for you developing Achilles tendonitis. So if you guys are jumping on here on the live, just type in live. I am here honestly to answer any of your questions that you have regarding Achilles pain or strengthening and preventing Achilles pain. So type it right into the comment box. I'll be happy to answer it. I'm just trying to uh, catch up here on IG. I think we had a question that was, question was dorsiflexion. Yes, that was what I was talking about. Lack of ankle dorsiflexion when we were talking about limited mobility. Um, that was a lack of ankle dorsiflexion. So if you're lacking ankle dorsiflexion, which I find is very common, especially in folks that have lower leg pain, whether it's Achilles pain, plantar fasciitis, or patellofemoral pain, pain in the front of your kneecap um, in runners, that's a common pattern that I tend to see. So those are the kind of common risk factors um, that I do see. So we talked about decreased mobility, we talked about decreased strength, and lastly, the most common reason that you can suffer from Achilles pain is the simple one training errors. So what does that mean? It means going out too much too soon, not building up the tolerance in your legs, not doing it in a progressive fashion. Weather's nice. It's still light out. It's 836 right now. Everyone's getting out there. Weather's great. It's a great time to run. I love that you're getting healthy, getting fit, getting out and running. However, you need to do it in a progressive fashion. All right. If you build up too soon, so you jump from running four miles a week or zero miles a week, and you try to run 20 miles in a week, then your soft tissues are gonna let you know, hey, I have not been able to do this load before, so what are you doing to me, right? So then you're gonna develop pain. So you need to train smart, and you need to train right, and also you need to train in order to run, right? So your running should not be your training. You need to train with specific exercises. So just like we talked about tonight, for Achilles is doing the foam rolling, doing your stretching, doing your strengthening. You need to do that on a weekly basis so you can build up the tolerance in your tissues in order to be able to hit the pavement so you can hit those PRs, be able to run those races, meet those health goals, get nice fit trim for summer, right? But do it smartly without having your body break down. So training is an important factor that you need to consider when you are starting a couch to 5K program, um, or if you're an experienced marathoner and you are running uh, multiple races, this is like race season now, we're really hitting the halves, you're hitting a couple of foals, um, or you're getting ready for a fall um, full marathon, then you need to be able to train in order to run. So do it smartly. All right. So those are my top three common reasons you can suffer from Achilles pain when you run. Um, let me know, what was one thing that you learned about today? Just because I like to see what really works, what resonates with you, topics that I kind of touch upon. If you like kind of description of anatomy, the conditions, the stages, the exercises, let me know. Let me know what you like. Let me know one thing that you learned that will give me feedback for future kind of live trainings. Every Monday night, we do our Spark Live, 8 p.m. Um, Sherry came on. Sherry, thanks for tagging a bunch of friends. I appreciate that. Teresa, thank you for jumping on as well. Uh, so Teresa is asking, foam rolling the calves or the hammies or both? So good question. Hamstrings, back of the top of the thigh is what we call the posterior chain. So some folks have tightness in the back of the whole posterior chain. However, if we're specifically talking about Achilles problems, usually hamstring muscle length or hamstring tightness will not be a contributing factor to Achilles pain. Would it hurt you to roll your hamstrings? No. Do you have all the time in the world? If you do, then I would say yes. Um, also, keep in mind, Teresa, that when you do your foam rolling, no more than 30 to 60 seconds per leg. Um, I spent actually a lot of time doing, uh, we've got some fireworks going here, um, summertime, getting ready for the force. Um, when you are doing your foam rolling, that we don't want to spend an inordinate around a, amount of time doing your foam rolling. We're really just doing it to kind of tap into our central nervous system and then kind of letting that either ramp up or kind of calm down, depending upon where you're looking for muscle facilitation before a run, or if you're trying to relax it kind of after you're running. So you don't want to do more than 30 to 60 seconds. So Teresa, if you have time to do 
all your main muscle groups, which is what I do. So I do 30 seconds per muscle, each leg, and then I'm done a couple minutes, um, if that, and then I'm ready to go. If I went on a long run, like yesterday was kind of a long run for me because it's been a um, couple weeks, or at least it was a week. I was in flight, Chicago, everything was tight. Everything was feeling, you know, legs were feeling heavy. So I did do a lot of foam rolling um, on Sunday, yesterday, before I did eight miles. And that definitely helped feel a little bit looser as I went on. And then when I came back, I did a little foam rolling prior to my static stretching. So I hope that helps you, Teresa. I hope that answers your question. And I did try to tag you just to let you know. Um, but I don't believe, even though we are friends, I don't believe I was able to tag you. So you might want to just check your settings. It's just good for you to know. Some people don't know that they don't have that um, checked off in their settings where you can't tag them. All right. So I did think about you. I didn't forget about you. Um, so thanks for jumping on here on the live. And um, ironically, you just came from a run. All right. That's good. So now you'll, you'll know what you need to do. Um, you can hop down on your floor, pull out your foam roller, start rolling. Uh, Hannah, thanks for jumping on here. Hannah's a runner. And uh, Teresa is my pleasure. Anyone else have any questions before we jump off here on the live? Um, before I get off, I did want to tell you guys, if you are a runner in Connecticut, especially, or runners everywhere, we don't discriminate. But here in Connecticut, we do have a healthy runner, closed Facebook group. And really the goal of that is to just help each other as a community of runners. Sometimes in Facebook, in the closed groups, you can have a little bit more community atmosphere. Um, we have a dietitian in there, Kelly Breyer, who's a runner. Um, she's a licensed dietitian. She's dropping a lot of nutrition content in there. I'm dropping some specific healthy kind of runner exercise stuff. So as we move forward, my plan, just so you know, is as that group starts to build up, I do want to kind of offer some more exclusive free services for those that are in the group. And I will be doing a lot of the live trainings just exclusively for those in the group. So if you are interested in anything that we talked about today, if you're interested in learning about what exercises are best for runners um, moving forward, that's going to keep you happy, healthy, um, hitting those PRs, being able to hit the pavement, hit those miles, hit those weekly running goals, then definitely check out Healthy Runner CT, type it into the search box, um, or if you just want to write in free group into the comment box, I'll just send you the link right away so you don't even have to worry about that. And so you can sign in um, to the closed Facebook group. And also, if you are on here and you are in the Cheshire Wallingford area um, at Spark Physical Therapy, our commitment is really keeping active adults and athletes um, healthy, doing what they love without pain, rest, or multiple trips to the doctors. So for those of you who are frustrated, you've been getting the runaround, you've been having pain for a while, you're kind of stopping, you're resting, you're, you're being told just don't run. And they're saying just don't run because you have this Achilles pain, you have this hamstring pain, um, you have this inside your ankle pain, plantar fasciitis, right? Knee pain, the most common culprit. Um, I've talked to many people who go to medical providers who aren't familiar with running and haven't had the training that I have had, as well as the clinical experience and have helped as many runners as I've helped. And they kind of have the mentality, well, you know, if you didn't run, you wouldn't have pain. But no, that's not a good philosophy. Well, mental, I think, on here can attest to all of that. All right, we are trying to reconnect on Facebook here. So I was just finishing up those on the IG Live. And I'm going to wait for this to reconnect. Um, but if you are in the Cheshire Wallingford area, reach out to me, send me a little DM. I will uh, answer your questions if you have any running related questions. Thanks for jumping on on IG Live. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Isabella. Bye.